In September of the previous year, following years of preparation and building, NASA finally succeeded in its mission to crash a spaceship with an asteroid that was traveling through the solar system. It wasn't out of some macabre fascination in bashing space rocks together, but rather to explore whether we may successfully deflect an asteroid away from Earth. Now we know we're on the correct track. The findings indicate that the route of the rock was altered by a significantly bigger margin than was originally estimated. There have been a total of five articles have been published in Nature that outlines the reasons for and the steps involved in this course adjustment. In this particular instance, it feels as though the ground we stand on is quietly floating through space. But, there are a great number of massive space rocks in the universe, and it would be catastrophic if one of these things were to strike the Earth. Investigate the time period known as prehistory. By slamming spaceships into the rocks, we have the opportunity to potentially divert any huge asteroids that are heading our way. If momentum were transferred from the spaceship to the asteroid, the trajectory that the asteroid would take through space might be modified to some degree. DART stands for the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, which is what the scientists came up with to find out if something like this was even conceivable. The target turned out to be the diminutive moon Dimorphos, which travels in orbit around the larger asteroid Didymos. Because of the accuracy with which their orbital periods have been specified, if there were ever to be a modification to Dimorphos' course, it would manifest itself as a change in the orbital period of the two objects. Didymos, whose circumference is approximately 780 meters, 2,400 feet, is circumnavigated by Dimorphos, whose diameter is approximately 160 meters, 525 feet, approximately every 11.9 hours or so. Dimorphos' diameter is approximately 160 meters, 525 feet. It was anticipated that the DART impact would result in a change of around 7 minutes to this orbital period. The change in the orbital period was even more drastic, as indicated in a study that was written under the leadership of a planetary astronomer. According to the findings of the study, Dimorphos now orbits Didymos 33 minutes more quickly than it did before the collision. This result was arrived at separately by two separate orbit measurements utilizing different approaches. It is not possible for the momentum transfer from the DART spacecraft to be the only factor in explaining the unexpectedly substantial change in the orbital period of the binary asteroid system. Ejector, also known as the debris that was flung off the asteroid during the explosion, is the topic of the second article that was led by a different team of astronomers. Not only did Dimorphos burst upon impact, but it also continued to produce dust tails for almost two weeks afterwards, behaving in a manner remarkably similar to that of a very dry comet. A third study was written by a different team of astronomers who looked at the light reflected off of Dimorphos before, during, and after the impact. This report was written at the SETI Institute in the United States and was directed by Ariel Graykowski. When approximately three weeks had passed since the crash, the illumination of Dimorphos had returned to the levels it had before the impact. According to the data on the asteroid's brightness collected over the course of that time frame, the asteroid shed between 0.3 and 0.5% of its mass. Researchers at the Applied Physics Laboratory at Johns Hopkins University, 
led by astronomer Andrew Cheng, discovered that the ejector was the primary source of the orbital perturbation of the twin asteroid. This discovery was made by the researchers. At the moment of impact, more energy was transferred to Dimorphos by the debris that was blasted from the DART spacecraft than by the DART spacecraft itself. According to their research, the impact of DART demonstrates that the momentum transmitted to a target asteroid can significantly exceed the incident momentum of the kinetic impactor. This demonstrates that kinetic impact is an effective method for preventing future asteroid collisions on Earth. At long last, a group of researchers led by a planetary scientist managed to piece together the data in order to reconstruct the impact event. This involved determining the sequence of events leading up to the impact, characterizing the impact site in great detail, and determining the dimensions and form of diamorphos. The findings of their investigation appear to be positive. The human race is in a position to efficiently alter the path of the asteroid without having to first send out an expensive and time-consuming research trip to learn more about the asteroid's composition and the conditions that exist on its surface. If everything went according to plan, a mission to deflect an asteroid would be carried out several years before the anticipated collision. We are extremely fortunate to live in this day and age because it is highly unlikely that any asteroids will pose a threat to Earth for at least another hundred years. This gives us some breathing room to execute a large number of reconnaissance flights to any prospective dangers in the periphery, which increases our chances of a successful deflection in the far future. Because of this, the data that we obtain from DART is extremely valuable. It will assist us in modeling and planning for future asteroid deflections in the event that we ever require them which will allow us to better anticipate the outcomes of crashing spaceships into asteroids. By successfully colliding the DART spacecraft with the planet Dimorphos and measuring the resulting change in Dimorphos orbit, astronomers demonstrate that kinetic impactor technology is a plausible method that may conceivably be used to defend Earth from potential threats.